Hi, I'm Garrett Robinson. I'm a professional author, filmmaker, and podcaster, and today I'm going to show you how to publish a podcast episode. I run two weekly podcasts, the Storytelling Podcast and the We Make Movies Film Geeks Podcast, and today I'm going to take you through the process of posting one episode of the Storytelling Podcast. To publish your podcast using this guide, you'll need a few things. You'll need a YouTube channel to broadcast your podcast on, the free video converting program MPEG Stream Clip, a paid Libsyn account to host your podcast audio, and a working WordPress website with the Blueberry plugin. The first thing to do is to go to our show website. Here, you can see mine, thestorytellingpodcast.com. In order to publish podcast episodes through your website, you'll need the Blueberry PowerPress plugin from WordPress. You can find this by searching in the WordPress plugin store. I already have it installed, of course, but I'll show you a few key settings you'll need in order to make it work. You'll want to make sure that category podcasting is turned on. Category podcasting means your podcast is pulled from a single category of WordPress posts on your website. That way, if you do want to send different podcasts from the same website for any reason, you can just assign them to different categories and it'll take care of all of that for you. Now you'll want to click category podcasting in your dashboard. Select your category in the pull down menu. If you don't already have a category, create one using WordPress. My category is called STP Podcast Episodes, and all of my podcast posts are assigned to that category. I've already created this category, so I'll open it up to show you. All of the default settings for category podcasting work perfectly fine, so I don't change anything. I just click Save Changes. We could publish our first podcast episode now, but we still need to send the category feed somewhere in order to get it on distribution sites like iTunes and Stitcher and what have you. So we'll go to FeedBurner.com. FeedBurner signs you up with your Google account. If you don't already have a feed here, create one for your show using the text box and click I am a podcaster. If I were creating my podcast for the first time, I would say the storytelling podcast. Click I am a podcaster and hit next. Of course, I already have this feed, so I'll open it up to show you how it works. Under edit feed details, you can see a few things about this feed. Its title is the storytelling podcast. The original feed is the category feed from your WordPress site. This is where FeedBurner pulls your episodes from. To get the URL, simply use your website slash category slash your category name, in this case, stp-podcast-episodes, slash feed slash. Now, your feed address is what FeedBurner sends out. This is the URL you'll paste to distribution sites like iTunes and Stitcher. Copy that feed address and open iTunes. Go to the iTunes store and click the podcast tab above. On the right side, click submit a podcast. Here's where you'll paste the feed address URL from FeedBurner. Paste that in and click continue. iTunes will take you through the rest of the submission process, but I'm not going to do that here because my podcast is already set up. It's pretty self-explanatory. You shouldn't have any problems with it. Okay, so your podcast is now set up and submitted to iTunes, but if you're setting this up for the first time, there's nothing on it. So now we need to get the audio file for the podcast. You might be recording your episodes into a digital audio recorder, in which case you can simply pull the digital file from the recorder's SD card. I, on the other hand, broadcast my podcasts directly to YouTube via Google Hangout and pull my audio from there. So first I'll go to my YouTube channel and pull down the video file. You can find it under Video Manager, in the Uploads tab. I'm going to be publishing Storytelling Podcast episode 39, so I'll search for that. And there it is. Click on the pull-down arrow and select Download MP4. The file will begin downloading, but I'm going to cheat. I've already pulled the file down and have it in this window here. Now, one important thing to do here is rename your file so that it's only letters and numbers. The MP4 will probably download with all other kinds of characters, question marks and dashes and at symbols. Rename it to something that's just letters and numbers, otherwise you can get errors when you publish it. Now, I've got my MP4 file, but that's a video file, and I publish only audio podcasts, so I'm going to open it up in MPEG Stream Clip. MPEG Stream Clip is a video converting program that will open virtually any type of video and export it to virtually any other kind of media. Now that it's open in MPEG Stream Clip, I'm going to click File, Export Audio. For format, we'll select MP3. Channels is stereo. The sample rate should be set to 44.1 kHz, which is standard for podcasts. I prefer to set my bitrate at 128 kilobits per second. 
That provides good audio quality, but also results in a nice small file. If you're willing to pay extra for more Libsyn hosting online, you can go for 256 kilobits per second and get the best audio quality possible. Now that that's done, click OK and then select your export destination. I've got a converted subfolder within my episodes folder, so I'll select that and click OK. Now we're going to go to libsyn.com. Libsyn provides podcast hosting. What this means is that they store the audio for your podcast on their servers, and whenever someone downloads or listens to your podcast, they access the file through iTunes, through your website, and finally to libsyn.com. You don't want to host your files on your own website. You won't be able to access usage statistics, and your website can also get overloaded. Even website hosting providers that promise unlimited bandwidth will choke your website's access if too many people start accessing your large audio files through your website. Libsyn won't do that. They provide truly unlimited, unchoked bandwidth so as many people can listen to your show as you can attract to your show. Signing up for Libsyn is easy, so I won't bother discussing it here. I have a 600 megabytes per month plan, but for a single weekly podcast of hour-long shows, you'll probably be fine with a 400 megabyte plan. If your podcasts are only a half hour long, you might be fine with a 250 megabyte plan. Once you're in your Libsyn dashboard, hover over the Content tab and click Add a New Episode. A new screen will come up where you can publish your episode. First, upload the audio file you just created. Click Upload at the top, and then Choose File. Find the MP3 file and click OK to choose it. Next, fill in the title. Make sure you keep your title formatting consistent to avoid confusion. For me, it's STP for Storytelling Podcast, a three-digit episode number, space, M dash, space, and then the title. I don't use the subtitles, but you can if you wish. Next, write out the description for your show. I've got a text file already open with the show's description ready to go. You'll want to do this because the description will also go on your show's website. It's much easier to cut and paste in both places than it is to write it out twice. Next, select a thumbnail. If you've already uploaded a thumbnail, it will be available to select. You should really have a logo for your podcast, something simple that communicates what it's about. This will show up on your audience's phones or other listening devices when they're listening or searching for your show. I elect not to use blog thumbnails. Next, select your category. I only have one category, Storytelling Podcast. Choose any tags and keywords you wish. I don't really use this feature because most of my traffic comes from iTunes and they only use keywords from the title and description. They will not accept Libsyn submitted keywords. Choose whether or not to enable comments, and then set your rating. Our show uses adult language and sometimes discusses adult themes, so I always choose the explicit tag. I don't choose TV-style ratings because they're much more murky and unclear, and they don't get broadcast to iTunes anyway. Now you're ready to publish, so click Publish. The episode might take a while to get there, but when it does, you'll be able to reach this page with a link URL for your episode. Copy that link. We'll need it for the final step of publishing. Now let's go back to our website, and we'll click New, Post. I'll fill in my title. You'll notice it's the same title I used on Libsyn. The next thing I'll do is to select the date. I always set the publishing date as the date I recorded the episode, not the date I published it. This episode was recorded on January 21st, so I'll click Edit here, select the date, and select 20 hundred hours since we always record at 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now go to the Podcast Episodes section of the new post page. Click in the Media URL field and paste the URL to your audio file that we just got from Libsyn. Verify that the audio file works properly, and then you're good to go. Click Publish in the top right, and your podcast episode is published. I hope you found this tutorial helpful for publishing a podcast. If you want to get other tech tutorials about podcasting, writing and publishing books, or filmmaking, be sure to subscribe to the channel using the subscribe button below.